Hello and welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one I'll be showing you how to create a procedural coffee bean material in Blender 4. I'll also give you a very brief overview on how I created the particle system that's kicking out the coffee beans in the background. I'll also give you a brief overview of this custom scene setup. So I'll be using Blender 4.2, Windows 11, NVIDIA graphics card, Cycles render engine and a custom startup file. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. OK, so this is very similar to the custom startup file that I've showed you how to create on this channel before. The key differences are I've got two point lighting. I've also modeled a little coffee bean, which I've replicated around the scene, as you can see here. And also I've got a cylinder that's acting as a particle emitter with these settings. Now, some of them are grayed out because I've baked the settings in, but these are the settings that I've used in case you want to follow along and set that up for yourself. If you download the custom startup file from Gumroad though, this will be included. So you can always download that and figure it out from there. So we've got our main model that we're going to apply this to. Now normally I delete all of the extras for this, but I'm going to keep them in for this one. So I'm going over to the shading tab. I've got the monkey head selected. I'll enable display render preview and click on new material to assign a new material to that object. I will also give it a name and then press A and the period key on my number pad to bring it into focus and we'll make a start. Now this is actually surprisingly simple. We'll start with the principal shader and we'll adjust the roughness to 0.55. We'll increase the specular index of refraction level to 1. And then we'll open up the settings for the tint and just drop it down to a very, very light grey. On the coat, we'll adjust the roughness to 0.335, the index of refraction to 1.2, and we'll come back to the weight later. First up, let's get some pattern and colour going on. So we're going to press Shift A search for and apply a Voronoi texture and then press Control T and connect up the object output from the texture coordinate. We'll then connect that up to the base color in the principal shader and we'll adjust the scale to 2.5 and leave everything else as it is. You can see already the pattern forming on the surface there. We'll then search for and apply a color ramp in between the Voronoi and the principled. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see better. We'll change the interpolation to B-spline so it gives us a softer blend. We'll add two more color stops and distribute those evenly across that gradient. The first one I will leave as black. The second one I'm going to do as kind of a dark coffee colored bean, coffee bean brown. So I'm going to go for a hue of around 0 0.05, saturation of 0.9 and a value of 0 0.05. That'll give me a starting point to work from. I'm then going to move my cursor over that color block, press Ctrl C, and then paste it into the other two color blocks by selecting them and then Ctrl V over the color block. And I'll increase the color value to 0.1 on the third stop and 0.2 on the last and final color stop. And just make sure they're spread evenly. And you can see there's kind of a mottled effect across the surface of our monkey head there. Now I'm just going to align these uh, nodes by selecting them and either pressing shift equals or S, Y, 0. And then I will add a frame by pressing Shift P with those selected, N to open up that editor on the side and then give it a name. 
Now what I'm going to do is shift left click all of the objects that I want to apply it to with the one that's got it on last and then press control followed by M to link those materials. Next up we're going to search for and apply a noise texture and a bump node and this is going to give us the surface detail. So we'll connect up the noise texture to the height of the bump and connect that into the normal of both the main shader and also the coat and we'll connect the vector from the mapping node up to the noise texture as well. Now on the noise texture we're going to set the scale as 3, detail at 15 and leave everything else as it is apart from the distortion which I'm putting at minus 0.4. On the bump node I'm going to drop the strength to 0.25. And then again, I'm just going to tidy up those two nodes in a second. But for the coat on the principal shader, I'm going to increase that to hmm, what looks good. Let's go for 0.65. Gives us a bit of a glossy shade, but without being too uh, glossy. Uh, again, I'm going to just align my nodes here by pressing Shift equals and then SY0 to align the top edges. Shift P to apply a frame and then name it Detail. And guess what? That's the material created. It was that fast and simple. Now I'll just drop the index of a fraction just slightly there to 1.45. Not sure it makes a huge amount of difference because it's actually quite a solid colour anyway. So you can see there that's the colour that's the surface detail and they're both being mixed through that principal shader with the additional settings that we've got there. So they should be nice and easy to remember. Now for the render settings I'm using cycles obviously as I mentioned uh, and I did start making some changes here but I realized they were for the viewport so it doesn't matter at all don't even pay any attention I just need the render settings. Okay, so ignore that bit. Take a look at the render settings just below. There we go. Now I'll scroll down these in case you want to pause and take notes or follow along. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if you're finding these useful, because I do get questions that sometimes things don't work out quite the same as what I've done it. So I've tried to give you the custom startup file as well as all of the render settings that I use, so hopefully they will come out consistently. Then in the view layer, make sure we've got this one selected, the denoising data. And just before I go into the compositing tab, I'll just show you the settings for the lighting that I'm using. So we've got this light here, and then this one. So the first one was from the back, the last one is from the front. Just gives you some additional effects in the lighting. Uh, now then, compositing. So if we go in there, we can see I've got a denoise tab. I've also got some brightness and contrast in going on in here. But just make sure you've got that selected so you've got the extra denoising options available. So if we run that through render, the samples, I think, went through at around six seconds. And then the compositor just took around about the same. So it came out around 12 seconds. And here's the rendered version with slightly darker colours I've used here to give it a richer uh, look. Anyway, I hope you like it and we'll give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about any of it, please feel free to list them in the usual places. In the meantime, thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe.